First off, you get to grab a 15 16 socket on your impact gun and grab your 15 16 wrench, and then we can just run this off quickly like that. In this case, I'm wedged here on the gauge wheel because I, I didn't run it down. So I can put that down and then I'll have enough room to get that off. So in a lot of cases, we'll replace this spring with a heavy duty spring. Uh, in this case, we're reusing these springs because uh, they still have some life left in them. When we go to take the gauge wheel off, we gotta be aware that we have shims in behind there. And so I always like to capture my hardware when I'm taking it off and so we can find those shims when we go back together. Um, and that's just to set this spacing between the gauge wheel and the disc. As you can see, we have these washers on the outside. Those are the spare shims that the, the farmer can use to put on the other side and make adjustments uh, with a newer gauge wheel. Um, on the inside, you can see this is my shims that were on the inside. And this is what was physically setting my spacing to the depth arm. These you want to capture and uh, make sure you don't lose. So we'll drop those in our, our pan that we have um, under here and set that gauge wheel aside. One thing to note on this gauge wheel, it is getting some wear, getting some stubble damage along this edge. At some point, he's, the, the farmer is going to want to start replacing those. So here we can go ahead and run the disc off. Uh, in this case, I want to take the firming wheel arm off first, uh, and it makes it a little bit easier to get that disc off. Firming wheel arm. Um, we can check this bearing uh, on the firming wheel, make sure that it's, it's good and it's ready to go, and it is. And so this, as it is, is good to reinstall and go again. Firming spring, again, like I uh, mentioned before, that uh, we'll be reusing the spring. See that there is a little bit, of, little bit of wear here in it. And a lot of times we'll go ahead and replace these, but we want to reuse it in this case. Take the disc hardware off, and that's just 9 16 uh, socket on our little impact wrench here. The, now the tricky part with these discs sometimes is actually getting it off of this depth arm especially if the, the firming wheel arm is still in place. And so in this case, we could slide it right off pretty easily. In some cases, it fights us a little bit, and especially with newer discs that are taller. Um, and and it, sometimes it's a little bit of a technique getting these on and off without, without taking the depth shafts. So I'm gonna take this, the, the shifter plate off and also the depth handle with a half inch socket. So there's just two bolts that are back in here. It's actually on this side. It's just a carriage bolt that holds it so you don't have to hold the inside of it. So this is your carriage bolt. And we'll, we want to retain those because we are reusing them. Just use a 916 socket to get that uh, handle off. And uh, we will be putting in new handle new shifter plate and a new arm on there. So it, this here's a really great example of how much play we have in our arm, but now you can really see how much is there. And once we replace this arm and this shaft, it'll take up that play and, and it'll tighten up that whole uh, assembly to where the depth gauge wheel will actually have very little play at all. So and that comes off with a 916 as well, 916 socket and a wrench. So this should come off fairly easily, just give her a few taps. And, and a lot of times what we'll have here is, is actually get this wear, you can see a wear groove down into here where the shaft is worn into, uh, into this arm. And that's the biggest reason why we're changing this arm while we're at it. As you can see this, this depth shaft is really stuck in there. The fastest way to, to deal with that is just to f cut off the shaft, and then we can get to the spindle nut and run that nut off. But before I do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this seed boot off, take out, out the bolt for the seed boot, and then, uh, or for the tube, and then we'll take the seed boot bolt out. Comes out like that. 
And now if it, we have cases where these are stuck, particularly on this drill, and what we've been doing in those cases, because we are changing the seed boot in, and um, they are a standard wear seed boot, they don't break very easily. And, uh, and usually we'll break the boot and we can get the tube out. Uh, and so what I'll do is actually cut the end of this tube off with a bandsaw, um, sawzall or whatever you have. And, and what we'll reinsert this into the new boot and re-drill a hole and this tube is almost as good as new again. So next we have the seed boot. Um, this is the other area that we're going to address. And for one, we got the wear of the seed boot down here, but there's also this play that we have. And a lot of times you, you have a hard time taking care of this slop. And this is a significant amount of slop in this. And, and this changes your depth of, of how your seed is getting into the furrow. So we're going to address that with a, a new boot a new bolt, and then we'll put also install a stabilizer. Uh, and, and we'll sh see that a little bit later, but we'll uh, go ahead and run that out. And she comes off just like that. You can see it has a seed boot spring that we'll put a new spring in and also this new seed boot. What we also have here is, is we're you know, addressing the wear that we've got in the seed boot. We're gonna have to address this wear with a new boot and we're gonna put a new tab in. So now that we've got it, that part stripped down, closing wheel arm pivot pin out and the firming pivot pin out. Fight me a little bit, but they, they come out like that. Um, we're, we're placing those with new bearings and we're actually gonna run these bushings out. So what I'm gonna do here, is try to get on the inside of the bushing here and here and that'll drive this air hammer will drive the bushing out either direction from whichever direction i'm shooting it through so i'm trying to get it in at an angle so i could catch the edge of the of the bushing on the other side and as you can see they they'll go flying so just be aware that they will come out you could hit yourself or other people but So this is a bushing that we've run out and you can see previous to that, the, the seal came out as well. Now some of the newer drills has, have a seal on that um, uh, here and on here and are actually our, our kits that we do with the, the greaseless pivots actually does have a seal that goes with our greaseless pivots. Um, we are converting this to a greaseless pivot, but we're also, but we're going to use bearings uh, instead of bushings. So we won't need those seals in this ca in that case. Off she comes. So now what we're ready to do from this point is actually clean this pivot out. We got to get that grease out. We got to get the dirt out of there. So when we go in with new, uh, uh, new bearings in here that we're not contaminating that uh, cavity. Uh, so it's not getting to get out there and wear on the bearings. Uh, those bearings are sealed. So we're not as concerned about that as we would be with a standard uh, greaseless bushing.